I'm going to finish this week by talking about the concept of continuity. This is a property of functions that is deeply connected with limits. However, on the face of it, it's a pretty approachable concept. A function is continuous if it can be drawn in an unbroken curve. That is, it has no breaks or no jumps, no points, as we say, that are discontinuities. That's the idea. It's a valuable thing to have a term for. In mathematical models, continuity will often be required. If you have an object that is moving, its path should be continuous, unless, of course, your object is capable of teleportation. If temperature is increasing, that's likely going to be continuous. As it rises, it has to go through the intermediate temperatures. It can't just suddenly jump. I imagine you can think of many other quantities that must vary continuously. That's the idea. What's the mathematical definition that fits this idea? The definition can be drawn as an unbroken curve is a good conceptual definition, but not really a formal mathematical definition. Instead, the mathematical definition uses limits. The limit provides the necessary mathematical tool to talk about the idea of an unbroken line. How does it do this? By talking about approach. This equation says that at a point a in the domain of f, the limit approaching a and the value at a are the same. This is how mathematics expresses an unbroken line. What the function is approaching, getting close to, is the actual value of the function. The line approaching the point matches up with the function at that point, and that makes the function continuous at the point a. You should think carefully about both sides of this equation. The left is a process, an approach. It doesn't know at all what happens exactly at A. It only knows what happens near A. The right side is an exact evaluation. It knows what happens at A, but not other points nearby. The equation says that the nearby behavior and the behavior exactly at the point align. All elementary functions, polynomials, roots, expo exponentials, trig, etc., are continuous on their domains. This on their domains is important here. The domains may be in pieces. For example, in the function here, the domain is all numbers except negative four. The function isn't continuous in negative four because it isn't in the domain. This break in the domain represents a break in the function. So the function will be drawn in two different pieces. However, the phrase continuous on their domains only means that they are unbroken curves inside the pieces of their domains. This one, for example, has two pieces of the domain, above negative four and below negative four, and on each it will have a graph which is an unbroken curve. Continuity is implicitly used in the first step of the limit evaluation procedure I talked about in the previous two videos. If an elementary function has no domain restrictions at a point, then the limit is just the value. That was the first thing to check in the limit process. The property that allows this, that says that the limit is just the function value, is continuity. The function x minus 7 over x plus 4 is continuous at 3, since 3 is in its domain, so the limit of this function is just its value, 4 over 7. So. If elementary functions are continuous on their domains, what might not be? Well, a function that has different definitions for different pieces of its domain may not be continuous. Consider this graph. This is a function h, which has constant value 0 when x is less than 0, but constant value 1 when x is larger than or equal to 0. This is called the Heaviside function. Intriguingly, this is not named for its asymmetrical graph, but actually after a mathematician named Heaviside. This function is discontinuous at x equals 0, where it jumps up. But x equals 0 is in the domain. The value at x equals 0 is 1, due to the inclusive inequality x greater than or equal to 0 on that side of the equation. You might wonder why this function has a name. It seems like a simple thing. Why is it important enough to be named? Well, this gets at the reasoning for having discontinuous functions. Why should there be functions with jumps anyway? Well, one of the things that the heavy side function does is it models switches. 
something that is off and then suddenly at x equals zero turns on. Modeling switches is, is a pretty natural thing to do. Lots of systems are built on switches. This is a function, a mathematical entity that captures the idea of a switch. This is one among many others of the ways that discontinuous functions are actually quite useful. The way that I formally defined things like the Heaviside function is as piecewise functions. I use this large brace notation and then give different expressions for the different pieces of the domain. The Heaviside function is zero when x is less than zero and one when x is greater than or equal to one. Both of these pieces show up in this notation. It is a piecewise function. Here is another piecewise function. Its whole domain is negative five to seven, not including the endpoints. And it has three pieces, x squared minus one on negative five to zero, x squared plus one on zero to three, including both endpoints, and three x minus five on three to seven. The conditions for a piecewise function don't actually have to be inequalities or intervals. They can be any kind of mathematical conditions on the domain. This function is a function with domain of all real numbers. And if you input a rational number, this function outputs one, but if you input an irrational number, this function outputs zero. And this is also a piecewise function. Here is a graph of the second last example on the previous slide with the two quadratic pieces and the line piece. Piecewise functions can fail to be continuous at their crossover points, where they switch from one version to another. Say the crossover point is A. To test a piecewise function for continuity, I take the limit from both sides, from above A and below A on the number line. Then I compare those limits um, to the function value. If everything lines up, if the limits are the same, then the function is continuous. If not, the function is discontinuous at that crossover point. Here is that graph again. Zero is a crossover point. If I take the limit from the left, I get negative one. The limit from the right is positive one. These are not the same, so the function is discontinuous, as you can see in the fact that the graph has a jump. Likewise, three is a crossover point. The limit from the left is x cubed plus one goes to 10 at x equals three. The limit from the right is nine minus five equals four, and four is not 10, so again, this is discontinuous at x equals three. This is the process you should always use for testing the continuity of piecewise functions. Look at the limits from the left and the limits from the right at the crossover points and compare them to see if they are continuous at their crossover points.